Hey guys, welcome to another Walk-In Wednesday. Today I have an exciting gun to show you, a little different than what you've seen before, because I'm gonna show you a Norwegian Konsberg Colt. Um, it's actually referred to as the Konsberg Colt because if you take a look at it, it looks exactly like the Colt 1911. Actually, it's, uh, it is the same design, licensed uh, under uh, the Colt design. Uh, John Browning was the one that designed the 1911. As most of you know, it was adopted by the uh, U.S. Army, um, probably 1912, 1913. They started their first military runs. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of this Colt and what makes this one so special. So if I back up a little bit, uh, Norway, was uh, the military was using the Nagant revolver. Uh, before before they adopted this. So they were using the Nagant and they were looking to upgrade that a little bit. Uh, so they ran some test trials and uh, the research that I read said they tried out some Webleys, they tried out a Mauser, probably had to be a broom handle because this was uh, 1913 and they wanted a larger caliber. Uh, they also tried out other Norwegian designs and they tried out the 1911 Colt. Uh, again, it was a design by John Browning, and um, uh, Colt was already starting to produce them. So Colt sent uh, some over uh, that they tested. They chose the Colt because they liked the operation a lot better than the other pistols. So this is also known as the, the model, you can see here, model 1914. But the earliest production, actually, in uh, it said model 1912. Uh, these were made in uh, 1917, but it said Colt authorized. Uh, pistol, 1912 pistol. Only 95 were made. I've never seen one, but they have to be pretty rare because that was the first variation of this pistol. And number two was in the Norwegian Military Museum and was stolen in 1978. So if you ever find number two of this pistol, they want it back. Then uh, they started full production of the 1914, uh, 19, the model 1914, in about 1917. They then made about 20,000 of these pistols up until 1940 when the Nazis invaded. So, uh, what happens when the Nazis came into the factory? Well, like in every country that they went into and occupied, um, they, they would take over the factories and they would start building their own munitions. So, here's the production numbers during the Nazi occupation. So in 1940, we can see they probably were focused on uh, uh, bringing calm to the, to the country. They came in in May. Uh, it took them a little time to get production up and going again, but they only made about 50 pistols. They made more in 41. Now, you, uh, 42, they made uh, uh, quite a few. Total were 8,200 pistols made between 40 and 45. You'll see a gap, uh, 43 and 44, there are no pistols made. And according to uh, factory records, um, they, they wanted to focus on Krag rifles instead. So those two years they focused, they prioritized Krag rifles, but then they, they made a few more in uh, 1945. Now let me say something interesting about this pistol. First of all, um, one of the differences when you look at the, well, if you know Colts, we, I know we have a lot of Colt collectors out there. Um, the only thing that they really changed uh, during the production was the slide stop. You can see the slide stop is a little bit different design. Uh, they made that change. And then when, when uh, the United States went to the model A1, they altered the uh, back frame, uh, the mainspring housing. That was slightly altered. Um, Nor the Norwegian Colt didn't make that alteration. If you look at it, every part is numbered. Uh, on Colt collectors, I know that sometimes they swap out parts to improve the quality of the gun, and that's very easy to do. Uh, here, the barrels are numbered, the, the slide stop is numbered, the trigger is numbered, uh, pretty much, you can see on the back it's numbered, uh, pretty much all of the small parts are numbered to the gun, which makes it a lot easier for collectors to know this is all original. Uh, secondly, the factory records were never destroyed. For a lot of the occupied countries, and certainly once you get into Germany, there are no records, which is why we always are trying to piece together when Walders were made and different Mausers, because there are no records. Everything was destroyed. In the Colt factory, Konsberg factory, by the way, Kohns, Konsberg is just right outside. It's um, not a suburb, but it's, it's about 60 miles outside of the capital of Oslo. They never destroyed the factory records. So that's, that's why we can get an exact number and we know exactly uh, when the run stopped and how many were made. It was exactly 
uh, uh, 920. Now these show up in the United States from time to time because lately some of uh, the American collectors have been importing them into our country, mostly because they bring a lot more money here than in Norway. Sorry to all you Norwegians, but uh, we, we just love it. We can't get enough of this stuff, as I like to say. Um, so we've been importing them from Norway, and lately I've been able to pick up quite a few of them. I've probably picked up five or six just this year. Um, and that's, uh, that's a high number considering how, how many were made. So because we have the factory records, we know that the last one made, you can see the serial number here, it's 30534. This one, 30531. So it's only a couple from the very end, May 5th. 1945, this gun was made. So it's kind of cool to have the factory records. And it probably never left. Norway was never issued because uh, the country was liberated on May 8th of 1945. So they made these right up until the end. And by the way, they made them again in 47 and 48, and then they stopped production. Now, I keep talking about how these, the, these guns are special, and let me show you why. Um, I already mentioned the Nazi ones from 40 to 40, uh, 1940 to 1942. There are no special markings on the Norwegians that were made under Nazi occupation, except in 1945. And that's why this gun is so desirable for collectors. Let me show you. Uh, first of all, uh, one thing cool about these pistols is they are dated. So the uh, 41, 42 would be dated, and these are dated 1945. In addition, they have a Nazi proof. You can see the Nazi proof. Here's a close-up of a proof, and you can see it's Waffen 84, which was the inspector proof. Why didn't they use the inspection proofs in 1940? I'm not sure. All I know is only the 1945s were Nazi proof. Now, uh, here in the United States, we have a lot of cult collectors. We hear from a lot of cult collectors, and we'll try to do more videos on cults. And we also have a lot of Nazi collectors. We do do a lot, uh, do do, I said do do. Um, we do do a lot of um, uh, videos about the Nazi guns. So this is a, a double whammy because not only is it, a, is it a cult design, but it's Nazi proofed. Only in 1945, only 920, a really cool pistol to collect and own. Just quickly, let me talk about the finish. Um, actually, the finish is pretty crude. Um, it's just a very dull military finish, very poorly put on. There's only three more after this one, so it's right at the very end. Very crudely made finish, probably um, never really issued or used, although somebody shot it because the bore has a little bit of wear. I deliberately left a screw off of this one because I wanted to just pull this grip off. It's like a beechwood grip, and you'll see them from time to time. They, they almost are white. Um, because this, this is like a stain. It comes off very easily. It's almost like they were spray painted. Uh, when I turn it over, you can see it's just a dark stain. So uh, typically it's, it's a very light weight and light color beechwood grip uh, that has a black stain on it. So that's, that's what that looks like. And then also on this one, the magazine, this is actually the correct magazine. It does have the loop. Generally they're unfinished, but I've seen them crudely finished. I've seen them unfinished. I think it, because it's 1945, I think unfinished is fine. On this one, however, uh, somebody, unfortunately, the mag has been swapped. I'm gonna try to find an original mag. They're not that hard to find, uh, but this is not an original mag because it is blued and it doesn't have the lanyard. So you wanna kinda watch out for that. Um, also, speaking of watching out, uh, they do have the exact zero range, so be careful if you buy one, and this is a big investment. Uh, so for example, the 40, 41, 42, uh, they might sell for like $3,000. These will sell for twice that just because it's 1945, there are uh, very few produced, and it has the Waffen proof. So obviously, uh, the ones before and after, um, well, there are 1945 ones uh, that were produced from parts after the war. Somebody could just pop a fake stamp on there and probably double or even uh, triple the price. So watch out for fakes. Make sure it's in the right range. And because you watch this YouTube channel, you now know what the right range is. So the last thing that I wanted to cover on this lovely walk-in Wednesday, very cool gun, is who did this go to? Uh, well, these were made in 45 caliber, and of course the Germans, everything was nine millimeters, so I don't think they ever went into the heart of Germany. Um, how they, what's conjectured and what uh, history seems to bear out is these were issued 
uh, to Germans who were occupying Norway because the 45 caliber ammunition was available in Norway, but generally not outside. I mean, obviously they could ship it down, but when you run out of ammo, it's a pain in the neck. Just, hey, order more. They have to get it from Norway. So they generally stayed in Norway, and uh, some of them were issued to the Norwegian SS troops. I said a little bit about that, and I apologize to those Norwegians, but the truth is, uh, in many of the occupied countries, there were people who sympathized with the fascist Nazi ideology, and they joined. Um, and so we know there was, a, there was a Nordic division of the SS, and it is believed that many of these Norwegian guns went to those divisions. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something today. I did as I was researching these. I knew about these guns, but I didn't know the history of the guns. And I, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, thank you to our Norwegian friends who have watched this channel as well. Give us a shout out. We'd love to hear from you.